The bearded vulture is a large charismatic raptor that is critically endangered in southern Africa. There are only 350 left in the population, and it's a small isolated population that occurs in the Maluti Drakensberg Mountains of Lesotho and South Africa. The purpose of the bearded vulture recovery program is to recover the population of bearded vultures so that they continue to deliver important ecosystem services and the ecosystem value that they have. The Bearded Vulture Recovery Program consists of a group of individuals from NGOs and government organisations that are all working together to achieve our goals of recovering the species. And these objectives centre around reducing mortality from poisoning or power line collisions or traditional medicine use. And they look at education, at research and monitoring, and also just providing a safe food and safe environment for the birds to breed and forage in. This project takes us across um, borders and we're doing a lot of extension work into Lesotho, which is part of the Bearded Vulture range. And we're collaborating with our Lesotho colleagues, uh, you know, spreading awareness, running some education campaigns, and also developing a, a very new uh, safe feeding site, which is coming along very nicely. And we hope that that's going to be a long-term impactful project into the future. The benefit of having a safe feeding site for the vultures is to provide and mitigate for the scarce food resources of the birds. Safe food, we can say, is fresh bones and carcasses that are not poisoned in any form. And it seems that these vultures are poisoned by lead when they feed on carcasses that have been shot with lead ammunition. Lead is a toxic heavy metal. It serves no biological function in any living organism. And of course, at BirdLife South Africa, we are concerned about the effect on vultures. Um, but what we should also be aware of is, a, is of the effect it may have on people who consume venison. So it is very important for us um, to get the word out there that if farmers do put out food for scavengers, such as vultures, that they make sure that the, the food is um, free of environmental to toxins such as lead. And it's only that way that we can ensure that our vulture populations are getting healthy food and not only for themselves, but also for the chicks that they are provisioning for in their nests. Farmers are encouraged to support these feeding sites, firstly because it allows for swift removal of any mortalities on their properties, which is obviously a hassle for them to have around, so one less thing for them to worry about. And secondly, it's, a, it's for a great cause, you know, it's a conservation initiative. Building hives at these feeding sites um, is a nice added value providing a unique photographic opportunity for the public. So there's a link to tourism, aids in observing the birds and monitoring them in close proximity. Importantly, in this case, where we are with our feeding site, the hard brings an opportunity for awareness and educational support. And then a third objective for us is to try and raise funds for the feeding site, because obviously these sites are very expensive to run. We can also reduce the risk of the animals being hit by power lines through feeding them the safe feeding site here. For, you know, for power lines and for wind energy, energy infrastructure in general, Central Incident Register, which is the database that we have, it's quite important to make sure that you identify those areas, to make sure that people know where to report incidents. And by, by reporting those incidents, that's the only way we can investigate. And that's the only way that we can make recommendations to the utilities, to ESCOM in South Africa, and hopefully in the future to Lesotho Electricity Corporation. Wind farms, if not built in the right place, could pose a significant new threat to bearded vultures. Um, we know this because we could use 10 years of tracking data to build a detailed uh, habitat model. And that model has demonstrated that bearded vultures select the same habitat that wind farmers do. Um, because they've got good wind resources. We implemented a tracking program about uh, 20 years ago, and we've caught and fitted about 25 bearded vultures with tracking devices. The main reason for doing this was to find out what the causes of the decline were for the population, so what was killing these birds. And the tracking data has also provided some fantastic information on their ranging behavior. So uh, how big the home ranges are and which areas uh, are favored by these birds. And this tracking data has enabled us to develop a habitat use model, which we can then use for any planning purposes to try and limit developments to areas that will not impact on bearded vultures. We also know from the same tracking data 
that bearded vultures spend most of their flying time um, within the same height as the, as the rotor of a typical modern uh, wind turbine. So the combination of the location as well as the flying height then make them very susceptible to, to collisions. It's really important that we build these wind farms in the right place. So it's, it's essential that um, we work together with wind farm developers um, and government and, and make sure that wind farms uh, avoid critical areas um, and, and that as far as possible we can find areas where there is less impact on, on biodiversity and bird life in particular. We need to be solving ESCOM issues but also conservation issues. Just imagine if you don't have vultures and, and the public health issues that we will have because those carcasses will not be removed and it's quite important that uh, I think utilities also see that side of things, that not just their benefit, but also having a vulture in the space, how much it contributes for, to public health, not beyond, you know, beyond conservation. Bearded vulture is mainly collisions because they don't really sit on the structures, but we must understand also that the species occur in, in high altitude areas where it's remote and people don't necessarily get there, even though I'm saying anyone can report the incidents. And 10 incidents for a critically endangered species is uh, it's quite a lot. And if we can do something uh, in terms of uh, mitigating those collisions, it's, 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 it's quite something. How we mitigate the incidents is by making sure that we make the lines visible. So we put up the markers on the, on the lines, so what we call uh, flappers. There is research that's, been, uh, that's going on and we are testing more devices as, as sometimes we are still seeing some repeat incidents even though the lines are already marked. Well, there are nest monitors, people who monitor nests in Lesotho and I think they, they are gold in terms of if we can integrate the training that we do with the utilities in terms of the interactions, they can actually help with the incident investigations in Lesotho. Uh, monitoring helps us identifying the population of uh, bearded vultures within the country, helping us to determine the threats around the nesting or the breeding territories. Vultures face uh, lots of challenges currently, so the data will help us to understand more and make more informed decisions about the conservation of uh, this species. The more in-depth our monitoring, the more we can understand population trends, population statuses, and particularly around the nesting uh, monitoring, we are really interested in understanding nesting activity in general and obviously productivity over the season. The added value to the, the monitoring program is to support the breeding program. As breeding season approaches, uh, there's a network of people that are, are, are monitoring nest sites and those that become active are identified and then the harvest team will come in and harvest from those identified sites. They lay two eggs and they raise a single chick so we are taking away one of those eggs. We are the only facility so far within the recovery program that hold these birds um, and the mandate was to collect 32 um, genetically distinct birds or different from different nests and we're, we're nearly there. We're on 27. The whole part of the management of what we do in this breeding program is is critical to make sure that the birds grow up behaviorally sound so that they in turn will breed and their progeny will supplement the wild population. Initially when they're very young um, they fed with a puppet behind screens. The puppet becomes the interface between us as the feeder and, and the chick. These birds will be around nearly 40 years. So it'll go from our lifetime into our next generation. And that's where education is really important, another objective of the program. Because we're asking our communities to be custodians of these birds. We're asking people to care. A first line of defense for us is the education and awareness. There are many beliefs and myths regarding vultures, which are just unfortunate. It's often misunderstood um, for various reasons. Some believe that it hunts and kill. Um, for feeding. So these are some of the myths and beliefs we want to address with a broader society. And our targeted audience in these awarenesses have been traditional hill associations, 
It's been at the Department of Education, youth, and other stakeholders. We started with the commemoration of the um, International Vulture Awareness Day, which is held annually. So it was such, such a, an exciting opportunity for learners um, and, and their teachers to go to the vulture feeding site. Some of our participants had never been to any vulture feeding site. They've never seen a vulture hide. So it was an exciting experience for them just to walk in there with excitement and sit there and observe the vultures. We were privileged to also interact with traditional hill associations. I, I just enjoyed their presence. We do not want to come across as being intimidating, but also try and accommodate everyone and engage everyone. Tinzukovokova <laughs> The shepherds are the people that are taking care of the animals. We want to appreciate them on taking care of the mother nature and we also want to talk to them about the vulture in general, especially bearded vulture that is endangered. We have them staying more on the mountains most of the time where they get interaction with these birds every day. They believe that they eat their lambs, which is not true. People need to be educated or we need to do the awareness to different people because some of them, they really lack knowledge about conserving the bearded vulture. If they, they know that it exists, they don't know why do we need it in our lives. Before they could know anything about bearded vultures, they used to kill them. But now, since we have started this awareness, they have changed. The seed has been sown. They are there now to water it and to grow it. These have to be continued interventions. It shouldn't stop. We need more investment that is duty of care, that they go beyond what is required by the national uh, legislation. And it's always good when you have the locals doing their own, I think, mitigation and, and contributing to conservation of, of the species that's uh, critically endangered. So we really are working with the best of our capacity, but we do need support. We need support in, in funding, we need support in, in just custodianship, because they are the flagship of the mountain, mountain kingdoms. Honesty is it's a project of hope. I want to carry on protecting them and then just make sure that my grand grand kids can see this amazing and unique bed that we have, especially bearded vulture, which you cannot find it everywhere. These are some of the species that, if not co conserved, uh, could sadly go extinct. So we are calling for a joint effort to everyone. It, it must be everyone's business. Everyone must be an ambassador in their own communities and preaching the message about um, the importance of the bearded vultures. You can help by sharing information about the project, by reporting sightings of any illegal activities involving vultures. You can report nest sites or sightings of birds and also donate to the various conservation projects for the species.